Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you the FPC plugin inside FL Studio and as well as showing you the sort of basics and beginner stuff and going into a lot more detail of all the functions, I'm also going to be showing you practical ways to use it in your beat making or production. During this video I'm going to be triggering the FPC using the Akai Fire controller but you don't even need a MIDI controller to make use of this plugin but if you have a keyboard, a drum pad or the fire it might make it a little bit easier but you don't need a MIDI controller to follow along with this tutorial. So we're inside FL Studio and let's just start by loading up the FPC plugin. So we're going to press this plus here, we're going to find FPC in the drum sections and immediately this is what opens up. We have a drum machine with the classic sort of Akai MPC 16 pad layout. The first thing to mention is that like all plugins inside FL Studio it's completely resizable. You can also resize this uh, sort of ADSR envelope and whatnot. So just get it at a nice size for your screen. You might be working on a laptop or a computer, make it fit your screen really well. And the basic idea is that you load these pads with different samples. These could be drums, they could be melodic samples. And then you can either play those samples with your fingers, record them in, or if we open up the piano roll, which you can get by right clicking and pressing piano roll or pressing F7, all of the samples that are populated on the pads will be here and you can just draw them in just like that. I've talked to many, many beginners and a lot of them tend to shy away from plugins like this because they can seem really overly complicated for a beginner to try and understand. So I hope in this video, I'll try and simplify everything for you. So let's just keep it completely basic. Right now we've got pads, they've got samples on them. We can either play those in and record them or we can program them similar to how we would in the channel rack using the piano roll. This is how the FPC loads up initially. So you've got some snares, kick drums, hi-hats, but there are also many different presets. And of course you can clear the whole bank and load your own samples in. So I'm just gonna show you a few of the different presets. We have electronic presets here. And there's also some sort of high quality jazz and funk kits as well. And these all contain sort of different sounding samples. Before I empty the kit and start building up my own drum kit, because that's essentially what I want to do, I'm just going to show a few of the different pad properties. If you click on a pad, such as this snare, it selects that pad and it lets you know which sample or samples are loaded on the pads. And over here are where all of the samples loaded onto this pad are. So there's actually four for this one snare, but they're split up into different velocity levels. So one thing you might not know is that if you click at the top of the pad, you get a very low velocity. If you click at the bottom, you get a high velocity. And the velocity of you hitting the pad or clicking determines which sample is played and how loud it's played back. So in this case, if I click at the top, I have this softer sample. And if I click at the bottom, I have this sort of more transient sample and it's a bit louder. The pad that we have selected is shown up here. So pad six out of 32, because you have 16 pads on bank A, and then 16 pads on bank B, but we're not really gonna look at that in this video. So we're just gonna stay with pad A. It tells you the name of it, in this case, snare two. And then you have some properties here. So you have the volume of the entire pad. So this will affect all of your different layers. So I can take the volume down and back up again. The next parameter is the pan. So this will pan everything to the left or to the right, to the left, center, right. Then you have the pitch of the entire pad. You can mute a pad, you can solo a pad, and this final button is to do with the velocity. So if this is orange, it means that if you hit a pad softly, it will play back quiet. If you hit a pad hard, it will play back loud. And it's worth mentioning that these controls at the top affect every single sample that you have loaded onto your pad. So this is not affecting individual samples, it's affecting all of the samples on the pad. The next thing along in this black box shows us which MIDI note it is on the piano roll. In this case, the snare is D3. So if we were playing on a MIDI keyboard and we hit D3, that would play back the snare. These next two are really important. They're sort of cut groups. So we have cut and cut by. And what this means is that one pad will stop playing if another pad from the same cut group is pressed. So in this case, I have an open hat here and it's in cut group zero by zero. The other pads had nothing there. So any other pad in group zero will cut off this pad playing. So in this case, if you have an open hat playing and then you hit a closed hat, the volume from that open hat in real life would be cut off because if you were playing an open hat and then you hit the hat again, the vibration of that hi-hat would be sort of shut off. So in this case, if I hit the open hi-hat, you can hear that it takes a while to die away, whereas the closed hi-hat's quick. So if I hit the open, then the closed, it will cut off the volume from the open hi-hat. 
and this is a feature that's very important because it doesn't just make the drums realistic, but if you're launching melodic samples and you want one sample to cut off another sample, that's the kind of thing that's very important to avoid any kind of dissonance or sort of hitting the wrong notes. And then the last sort of pad property is the output. So in this case, I have, I'm gonna send the FPC to track 10 on my mixer. This might be something you're doing. And now if I click on the kick drum and I output it to one, it means that that kick drum is gonna be output one along from where I have the FPC sent. So it should be, its volume should be coming out of track 11. So if I have the snare, I can output it two. And now it's on 12. I can put as many as I want to the same. So both these snares are going two along, kicks going one along. This means that you can still do all of your complex drum mixing and routing. You can still make a drum bus. You can still add reverb only to the snare. In this case, if I want to load a reverb onto the snare, and maybe I want to EQ the snare as well, just so it's really bright or something. The kick is completely unaffected by any of that reverb. And I know that's something that worries beginners because they think that by having all the drums together, you can't process them separately. Well, with drum machines like this, all you have to do is route the outputs differently and you have full and total control. You can select a pad by left clicking on it. Up at the top here, it tells you which pad of the bank you have selected. So pad five of 32, this would be pad one. This would be pad 16, and there's a second bank, which takes you all the way to 32, but we're only gonna look at bank A. Then it tells you which one you have selected, which is snare one, and then there's a drop down menu here. This opens up a lot more properties to do with the pad. So from here, we can change the color to whatever we want. We can give it a different icon, a different color, and we can rename the pad, and there's lots of other options for saving that I'll go into in just a moment. So now that we've looked at the global pad properties, let's look at more detail on one specific pad. So I'm going to select snare one, which is just here. And this is made up of many different samples down here. There's quite a few things to cover here, but the first thing would be that if you want to create a new layer, you just press this create button. And from here you can drag in whatever sample you want. So say I have a different snare, you can just drag it straight onto there and it's been assigned to the pad. To delete that layer, I just press delete. To select a different layer, you can press the pad here or just press its relative sample here. And say you have this layer and you want it to be higher up, you just press that button and it moves it higher or lower in the stack. Then the most important bit are the velocity layers. So this determines which sample will be played. You might have remembered earlier I said there was four or five samples loaded on one particular pad. So this lets us know when you press the pad at a certain velocity, which sample is triggered. Lower velocities are gonna trigger this sample. The highest velocity is going to trigger this sample. And if you look just here, as I play this snare, you'll see that initially it's the first sample. Then as I go down the pad with a higher velocity, it'll start playing the higher samples. And just like with the global layer, if we have an individual layer selected, we can change its volume. We can change its relative pan, which won't affect the pan of the other ones and we can change its relative pitch, which won't change the pitch of any of the other samples either. And the final thing to mention before we start loading our own samples is this ADSR envelope down here. So if I have a pad selected, in this case, this one, if I turn this on, it will activate this ADSR envelope. And to a lot of beginners, this again is really confusing. It's nothing really to be scared of. It's more to do with what shape the velocity of the sound will follow. So if I explain that a little bit better, if the attack is high, then the sound is gonna start immediately. If the attack is pulled along a little bit, it's gonna have a softer attack. Volume's gonna be getting taken away from the start and it's gonna be, it's gonna round itself up a little bit. Like that. And often, and often with things like ADSR, the best way to learn it is just to practice with it and, and mess around with it. If I take the sustain all the way down, there's like no tail on the snare at all. If I pull it along, pull it up, you hear a lot more of the tail when it's higher. The release lets us know what happens to the sound after I release the pad. So if I press the pad uh, very quickly and release it, the sound dies away quite naturally. But if I take the release all the way in, the sound dies off incredibly quickly. So that kind of thing is very useful when you start loading in melodic samples and you want them to cut off or start quickly or start more smooth. And now let's get to the real fun bit and that's loading in our own kit, building our custom samples. So for that, what I'm gonna do is go into the top bar here, presets, I'm gonna load empty. 
Now every single pad has been cleared and we're ready to start building our own kit. So for this, I'd recommend going into the packs in FL Studio and going through the drums and finding samples that you like. In this case, I'm just gonna go into my own music production samples and I'm gonna load in some samples that I have in my sample pack, which you can download in the description. And I'm just gonna start pulling in some samples, hi-hats, snares. You can load them into whichever one you want. And all I'm doing here is finding the sample, clicking it, dragging it, and then releasing it on a pad. I should have done that a little bit slower. It's a, quite a simple process. And then once you have a sample there, I'd recommend just renaming it and changing the color until it's exactly the way you want it to be. If for instance, you want to load two snares onto the same pad, it's very simple. That's two snares loaded there, but right now they both play at the same time. Press spread even, it will cut one so that it's the first half of the velocity and then the other will be the second half, just like that. And this works no matter how many samples you drag on. If you just press spread even, it will split them evenly like that. I'm also gonna drag in some melodic loops and I'm just gonna cut ahead to what I end up with. So that's most of my pads populated with samples. I have some kicks, some snares, hi-hats, and some melodic samples. And the melodic samples here all belong to different cut groups. So I have them all cutting each other off. If I didn't have those melodic samples cut each other off and be part of the same cut group, they would all just get really messy, blurry, and muddy when I start playing them. So far, I've really just talked about technical stuff to do with the FPC, but now it's time to actually start programming some beats and make music with it. So there's a few different ways to do this, and there's no right way, no wrong way. One way to do it, which many people like, is to just uh, finger drum. So they just practice their finger drumming and they either record in parts individually or they sort of try to play everything together. So I'm just gonna demonstrate this now. And what a lot of people like to do is place the samples in positions that make sense for their style of playing. So in this case, I'm gonna use both hands and don't expect anything crazy like you see on YouTube, no expert at this. But what a lot of people like to do is maybe play the hi-hat with one finger, kick and snare with another. And then when you get used to that kind of rhythm, you can start adding in different melodic samples. And when you're an absolute beginner with this, I would recommend not turning on a metronome and just trying to sort of feel the rhythm. But as you get used to it and you want to start recording, definitely go for that metronome. So in this case, I'm gonna turn the metronome on. I'm gonna press loop recording and I'm going to press play. And then I'm gonna start recording uh, individual little parts of this beat, starting with the kick and the snare, then maybe the hi-hat, then the melodics. Let's see how it goes. So that's the kick and the snare in. Let's do the melodics. There we go. Let's do the hi-hat. So you have lots of different options here. You can select them and quantize them, control A and control Q, and you can select them and delete them just like you can in the channel rack, undo whatever you've done, all of that stuff. I'm just gonna quickly press uh, control A and delete those, and I'm gonna show you another way of recording in, and this would be trying to sort of do everything together. And often for beginners, playing along to a metronome is really challenging, which is like, which is why we tend to prefer to stick to the channel rack and where it's all perfectly quantized. I would recommend just giving it a go because when you get used to drumming like this, it opens up a lot more sort of rhythmic possibilities and it usually makes you feel a lot more confident in your drum programming abilities. I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna try and record everything in together. So let's try recording this in. Let's add some more kicks and snares at the end. And if I just select all of those and delete them, just like at the start, there's not actually even a need for a MIDI controller because you can just paint in the steps precisely where you want them. One of the benefits of using the piano roll to do this is that you have the full control that the piano roll gives you in letting you do sort of note stutters and changing the velocities and all that stuff. It's all immediately available. Whereas when you do it in the channel rack, you have to dive a few steps deeper before all of these controls are opened up.
The last feature that I'm going to talk about is how to save your kits. So what you can do if it's on your computer and you're not going to go anywhere else is you can just save a preset. And as long as you still have those samples in the same places, the preset's going to load up just fine. But the next thing you could do is try exporting the entire kit. So you can export the kit as pad presets. You can export all the WAV files. So it just takes all those 16 uh, pads, it exports them, and you get the files that are on there. And there's some other file options, such as saving it for FL Studio Mobile. So it's worth sort of exploring these ones, looking at the manual a little bit, and finding out which type of export you want to do. Another thing that bothered me when I was starting out was that I would save a pad preset I had, and then the next time I loaded it up, the MIDI mapping wouldn't work and stuff like that. And if you are having problems getting your MIDI controller to sort of map right to the bank on the FPC. I would recommend watching my video about how to set up your MIDI controller. But in short, you go down here, you press map notes for the entire bank. And then on your MIDI controller, you press the lowest left hand down here and you go one, two, three, four, all the way up in this order until you get to the last pad. And then it should be mapped perfectly for you. So this video has got quite long, but we have covered just about everything I can possibly think of to do with the FPC. To anyone who's beginning or to anyone who doesn't tend to use like MPC style drum pads like this, is to set yourself a bit of a challenge. Maybe the next beat or the next song you're doing, try to incorporate an element of this style of beat making into it. Or if you only use this style of beat making, maybe try to do step sequence or drag the samples into the playlist because I didn't use the FPC fully for a very, very long time. And it's only been in the last month or two that I've even started finger drumming at all. But it's really changed the way I view drumming. It's really brought on my drum programming an awful lot more. You know, a couple of months ago, I, I couldn't finger drum at all. I just couldn't get my brain, my fingers and the pads and everything working together. And setting myself a challenge of trying to learn this kind of new workflow, it's really opened up a lot of different possibilities, a lot of different opportunities. And I'd recommend that if anyone feels a little bit stuck in their ways, I guess, like they only produce in one style, in one way, maybe just try mixing it up and it might really spark your creativity and lead to something really great. So that's all from me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next one too. Bye for now.